We're glad to bring you this message from Love Worth Finding Ministries with Adrian Rogers. We trust you'll be blessed as you apply these biblical truths to your daily life. When God works, Satan works also. Here's a question. True or false? Satan is against religion. Don't answer it out loud. Some say true. Some say false. Of course, the answer is false. Satan is not against religion. You're going to find out that Satan uses religion. It is one of his chief tools in his bag of tricks. As a matter of fact, if you study the Bible, you're going to find out that the very first temptation in the Garden of Eden was a religious temptation. It was a temptation not to be ungodly, but a temptation, would you believe it, to be godly. <laughs> he said, look, Eve, if you do this, you'll be like God. It wasn't a temptation to fall down. It was a temptation to climb up, to be as God. But do it my way. The devil, you see, is into religion up to his ears. Now, there was a revival in Samaria. Let's read about it. Look in verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. There's always joy when Jesus is present. There's always joy when there is real revival, joy unspeakable and full of glory. But notice in verse 9 how the subject changes, but. Just underscore the word but. You know, when uh, God opens the windows of heaven to bless us, the devil opens the doors of hell to blast us. And whenever there is revival... You can expect satanic opposition. But there was a certain man called Simon, which beforehand in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man, talking about Simon, is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon, now this is Simon the sorcerer, then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to pick up the reading in just a moment. But I want to talk to you about the counterfeit Christianity. When God moves, the devil also moves. As we've said before, Satan tried to pose the church from the outside, and that didn't work. It just drove the church to her knees. So now he's going to try to oppose the church from the inside. And he does it, first of all, with superficial saints, Ananias and Sapphira. But now he also does it with counterfeit religion. And the devil is a counterfeiter. And what he does, rather than to deny the faith, he counterfeits the faith. And that is doubly dangerous. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you live for God, are you going to have opposition? Whether you are an individual or church. I've often said, if you've never met the devil, it's because you and the devil have been going in the same direction. You turn around, and rather than being in collusion with the devil, you're going to find yourself in collision with the devil. Now, there's great joy in that city, but, but, Satan now begins to work. The three things I want to lay on your heart as we're thinking about counterfeit Christianity, and believe you me, these things are very real. And if there were ever a generation that needs to hear what I have to say, this is the generation that needs to hear of the dangers of counterfeit Christianity. Three things I, I want to warn you about. Number one, 
Don't be dazzled by the satanic force of false religion. Now, I chose the word dazzled carefully. Don't be dazzled by the satanic force of false religion. False religion has great force. Uh, look in verse 10. It speaks of this sorcerer. And the Bible says, To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. There was force in what this man was doing. And they were all dazzled by it. Notice verses 9 and 10. There was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Now, here was a man who was using sorcery. Sorcery is just another word for witchcraft. And by the way, witchcraft is alive and well in the world today. Witchcraft is alive and well in America today. Witchcraft is alive and well in many churches. You say, oh no, yes. And many people are dazzled by this. And they fail to understand that there is supernatural power. What Simon was doing was not just a bag of cheap tricks. It's not just that he was an illusionist. He was in league with the devil. Adrian, do you believe that there's anything to witchcraft? Absolutely. Do you believe that some of these people have supernatural power beyond the shadow of any doubt? As a matter of fact, the world is getting ready for Satan's Superman, 666, who's soon going to come on the scene. And one of his chief tools is going to be sorcery and witchcraft. And put in your margin, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, it speaks of the coming Antichrist, the man of sin, and it says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, listen to this now, with all power and signs and lying wonders. All power, signs, and lying wonders. What does that mean, lying wonders? It means miracles that will deceive. You know, sometimes people will get into sorcery, witchcraft, whatever, and they say, well, it, it, there's really something to it, pastor, as if that exonerates it. <laughs> if, it, as if that somehow indemnifies it, if somehow that substantiates it, there is something to it. But friend, what there is to it is devilish. Now, again, during the great tribulation, demonic forces are going to be loosed on the earth and leading the nations of the world toward Armageddon. Put this verse down. Revelation chapter 16, verse 14. The Bible describes some unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the beast, the dragon, the false prophet. And here's how the Bible describes these in verse 14. For these are the spirits of devils, now listen, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Demonic spirits leading the kings, the rulers, the potentates of this world, bringing them to Armageddon. The key verse is the spirit of demons working miracles. We've already seen uh, that Samaria was a place where people were demon-possessed. And uh, when Philip came to the revival, many unclean spirits or demons came out of people. There is a deadly demonic force in the world today. 